phone pitches. Do you use them or do you not? Absolutely. Check out how I make the most money off of using phone pitches of clients for all of my candidates. Check it. I'm Brianna Rooney, your millionaire recruiter. If you haven't yet seen this channel before, it is all about making you the next millionaire recruiter. So let's dig into it. Okay, so we always talk about how we can be the most efficient with our time. We have tons of openings and only so many candidates going back and forth um, to do it, right? You're only one person or maybe you're only one firm. I don't know. But I do know that you have to make things really easy for yourself. So when I first get a client, I do what is called a client intake, company intake. What you need to do is you need to get all of the information from the company or client and then use it in your best ability to transfer it to the candidate and get them super excited in what this opportunity holds. So. I think we've done a video before about client intakes. If we haven't, I'll definitely do that. So comment below if you've seen it yet. Uh, but our phone pitches are universal throughout Techies. And Techies is, as you know, or you should know, is my firm that's been around for 10 years. Yay! So what we do is we use a shared Google Docs. And it's cool because it you know, updates automatically. Yay for technology. And the client holder, so let's say like I'm the account holder on it. I'm the, I'm the recruiter. I'm gonna go ahead and do an intake on the company and I'm gonna put it in our phone pitches, but I'm gonna do it in a way that really makes sense for another recruiter to just almost read it verbatim and it comes across to the candidate that it's really genuine and I didn't just read it. Now, back in the day, what's funny is when I think about, I used to actually go on the website and read exactly what the company does on the About Us page. And it's so funny that no one's ever called me out on that, but whatever. So now here's what we do. We first put the URL. You want to know like exactly uh, how you can get to that company, how they can check it out themselves. And then you want to put some basic information when they were founded, how much funding they have. Most importantly, what do they do? You know, what's that elevator pitch? You have two sentences, 30 seconds, go. What do they do? No one's going to stay on the phone with you that long, not to mention, you know, they're only listening so much because their agenda is, again, what can you do for them? So that's super important. So elevator pitch, founded, money. What job openings do they actually have? You need to spell it out really nicely so the recruiter on there who doesn't know that client knows exactly what positions need to be filled, therefore they can tell the candidate exactly what needs to be filled. Again, we are not the engineers, but we need to understand how we can tell the engineers what that company needs regardless that we speak that same language. That makes sense? Okay, and by the way, make sure you, you know, comment, subscribe, whatever you need. Um, I love questions, I love answering them, so whatever you need, let me know. Um, also, what you need to know is salary. So let's say you're on the phone with a candidate and they give you a salary that you see is not in that range. You're gonna straight up tell them, like look, I just got you super excited about, I don't know, Google, but Google cannot pay you what you currently make. Do you wiggle on that? Can you, will you look at total compensation? What's your salary? What's your bonus? That starts this whole conversation and all of a sudden they trust you that much more because you have real data for them. I think that's super important. Another thing is what is their interview process? So you want to set up your candidates for success as much as you possibly can. So you want to tell them, what they are expected of, uh, what that path looks like, and be able to prepare them as much as possible. Because the more you prepare them, the more they go into that interview with confidence and understand what they're you know, expected of them, and that really is upping their success for hopefully an offer and then an acceptance. Yay! So along that, you also want what would be your company's dream candidate? You want the nitty gritties. You don't want just to paste that you know, job description in there. You wanna know, hey, this hasn't worked for you. Why not? Where are people falling short? Um, let's be real. Do you, are you focused more on culture? Are you focused more on 
computer science degrees for the technology world. That's what's expected a lot of times. Um, is it amount of years? Is it where they come from as far as company, last company? What is it? That's more of a conversation and really great to also put in there. Uh, if there's common denominators, for example, let's say, oh, everybody on their tech team is from Berkeley, okay? Just add that, just add those things that can be you know, relatable. So if you're on the phone with a Berkeley grad, you say, hey, by the way, their founders are from Berkeley or most of their tech team's from Berkeley or you know, whatever makes them feel at home and easy, um, that's really where people are gonna wanna go because there's a few reasons why people change jobs and we can get into that a whole lot more, but common denominator is absolutely one of them because it's an instant connection. People, you know, like you're in, think about when you're in kindergarten. Okay, you can't because I can't remember that, but I mean, that's what that, that's the name of the game. You know, you make friends um, and you're gonna go to who you know and who you feel most comfortable with. For example, oh my gosh, she's wearing a blue shirt. I'm wearing a blue shirt too. That's where I'm gonna go. So I know that sounds silly, but that's human nature. So go with common denominators on any way you can. And in the phone pitch, that's just super important to grab out anything you have that another colleague of yours or you yourself can just pitch and flow. Um, so also people do ask, think of all the other things that candidates will ask you while you're on the phone. They're gonna say who's a competitor, um, what kind of equity is there, basically whatever is good for them and sells the company, you need to have, but you have to outline it really nicely so that it's in a sense idiot proof that you have to think that any person sitting in that chair talking to a candidate that's good for your client can pretty much just pick up the phone and essentially read and get them interested. So that is the whole point of a phone pitch. What you need to do is make sure that all of your candidates, assuming it's the right fit, tech fit, which also leads something I didn't add, uh, what is their tech stack as far as technology goes, if you're in that realm. Um, but you have to definitely pitch what is within the realm of what that person is looking for. However, don't be scared to go out of it a little bit if you see even an inkling of that they might be interested or maybe it's even by their home. You know, location is in that phone pitch too, right? Oh my gosh, I can't find anything by Mountain View. That's in the Bay. But let's just say I can't find anything in South Bay. It's by Mountain View. Gosh, it's just so important to me. Okay, great. So are you gonna go then spiel everything that this client does? No, you're gonna say, hey, I have this amazing, successful client. They're in Mountain View. They do what you do. They're looking for that. You know, so you're gonna just sell different aspects and that's where the phone pitch comes into play. So do your homework. Again, automate yourself as much as you can without being thoughtless and careless because that is what's gonna set you aside from a mediocre recruiter to the millionaire recruiter. So have fun and I would love to hear what you guys do. Uh, do you have a phone pitch? What do you put into it? So like, subscribe, comment. Have a great holiday season and don't forget that money is the vessel to do all the amazing things you want to do with your life. So go do them and I'll see you every Thursday at noon.